Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. My name is Ana Clara and I am truly happy to have you here today. It is February, which means that everywhere I go, literally if I go to the grocery store, if I go to my local bookstore, if I go to a coffee shop, I see Valentine's Day decorations everywhere. So I felt like this would be the perfect month to try to dip my toes into the romance genre, which is a genre that I do not tend to explore a lot. So I decided to film a video where I try to become a romance girly. That's my goal with this video. The ultimate goal is for me to be one of those girlies, but we will see how it's going to go. Now, of course, this is not my first time reading a romance book. I used to be obsessed with John Green when I was in high school. He was like my favorite author, but I feel like this is going to be the first time that I actually sit down and try to be more mindful of the romance books that I'm reading because I feel like what has often happened is that I just pick up a book simply because it is popular, but just because it's popular, it doesn't mean it's right for you. So what ends up happening is that I don't like the book and then I just assume that I don't like the genre as a whole. And that's something that I want to change. So that is why I came up with this video and I wanted to be extremely mindful and thoughtful with the books that I chose for my TBR. So with all of that being said, here is my TBR for this vlog. <laughs> The first book I am going to read, and I already have it on my Kindle, is Happy Place by Emily Henry. I feel like no one is doing romance and love stories quite like Emily Henry is. I honestly feel like she has book talk and booktube right here in the palm of her hands. And this is where I want to be. I want to be in the palm of her hands as well. And I am hoping that this book is going to put me there. I know that this was a bit controversial, but I have a feeling like this is going to be the right book for me from this author. And something that I have heard about Emily Henry is that her books are more of like a literary love story, which I think it's something that I am going to appreciate. And I feel like it's going to be a good way to slowly approach this genre where the story is not only focused on the love that these two characters have for each other, but also on their own personal journeys and personal growth. So I am really excited to read this one. I have very, very high hopes. And for whatever reason, I have a feeling that the like fake dating trope will be a trope that I am going to love because I just like that kind of like yearning and like secrecy and just, I don't know, it just sounds like something that is going to be fun, but also emotional. And I've seen a lot of people crying with this book, so I'm excited to see if it's going to make me cry as well. <laughs> The second book on my TBR is Check and Mate by Ellie Hazelwood, which I have had on Libro FM for three months now. I got it for free as an ARC when it was released and I never got around to listening to it, but I have seen so many people loving this book that it got me excited to read it as well. And Ellie Hazelwood is another huge name in the romance world, so she clearly knows what she's doing with her stories. I have heard that her books are funny and silly and cute and a little bit spicy, so I'm very excited to read this one, especially because I watched The Queen's Gambit when it came out, like literally the rest of the world, and loved it. So I would love to be back in the world of chess. And I think, I don't know, I just think this is going to be a fun one and I'm also excited to give it a try. Another book that I picked, and this is the only one that I picked only because it was popular, was The Seven Year Slip by Ashley Poston. I... I'm not entirely sure what this book is about, but I have seen it literally everywhere. At the end of last year, every other video that I would scroll through, someone was talking about this book, and I just want to know what the hype is about. So I'm curious. I decided to add it to this DVR. Do I think I'm going to enjoy it? Not sure, but I am just very curious to know what it is about. <laughs> And lastly, we have Seven Days in June by Tia Williams. This one I feel like is similar to Happy Place. I feel like it falls under the same category of sort of like a literary love story. And I also think that this, kind of like Happy Place, is sort of like 
lovers to enemy to lovers. I don't know all the tropes yet in romance. I am a baby romance girly, so I'm trying to learn them, but I have a feeling that is what you would call the story, which I also think it's something that I'm going to enjoy because I do like the idea of like discovering what this relationship once looked like, watching these characters grow, and then hopefully get back together in the end. We'll see how I'm going to feel, but I have a feeling that this one is also going to be a good one for me. So my predictions as of right now are that I am going to love Happy Place by Emily Henry. I think that I'm going to cry with Seven Days in June because I've heard that the writing is beautiful and I think this book makes people cry. I don't know, it just, the cover just gives me I'm gonna cry vibes. I think that I'm going to laugh and giggle and kick my feet up in the air with Check and Mate. And I honestly think I'm going to cringe with a seven year slip. But those are just my predictions. This is what this video is for, is to see how I'm going to react to these books and to see if I can finally become one of the romance girls. So thank you for being here and I am beyond excited to start this video and I will talk to you once I have read a little bit more of Happy Place and I can tell you what this book is about and also what are my first impressions. So see you later. It is the next day. I am about 70 pages into Happy Place by Emily Henry and I realized that I never really told you what this book is about. So before I get further into the story, I thought it would be a good idea to come here and give you a little synopsis of this book. So in the story, we are following Harriet, who is this medical student. I believe she just started her residency. She has this very strong friend group that she made in college and their little tradition is to spend a week of their summer in this huge and beautiful summer house in Maine that one of the parents of the friends owns. Harriet used to be engaged to Wynn who was part of the friend group. They were all really close. It's not like she brought him in. He was already part of the friend group before they started dating. They had been together for 10 years and something happened and they broke up. We don't really know why they broke up. All we know is that they are no longer together. However, their friends are not aware of this because they broke up around six months ago and none of them really told their friends, I believe, because they're not ready to face the reality that they are no longer together. And they weren't even planning on both being there for the summer, but this is a very special summer because it might be the last one they have in this house since the house is up for sale, the girl's dad no longer wants to have the summer house. So they're all back together, the whole gang, and these two don't want to ruin things because it's already the last summer that they are going to have in this beach house. There's already like a lot of sadness in that and they want to just allow everyone to enjoy their experience to the fullest. So they don't want to tell their friends that they're no longer together because they don't want to ruin things. So they are going to pretend they are still dating. And we go back and forth in time to like the now when they are pretending to be together in the summer. But we also go back in time to when like they started to get together. And it seems like not only is this cottage important for the friends, it's also important for their relationship because that is where they met. So yeah, this is what the book is about. So far, I feel like I am flying through this book. I read 70 pages and I did not want to put it down. The only reason I stopped was because I passed out. I was so tired yesterday, so I just fell asleep. So I'm really excited to continue reading it. I think once I reach the 50% mark, I'll give like a bigger update with my thoughts but so far it's it's been fun i've been enjoying my experience so i am going to sit here sip on my tea and read for a little bit more and i'll see you later I'm too tired to give you like my full thoughts so far, 
but this morning I read another 70 pages so I was around page 143, 145. But what I wanted to come here and say is that page number 150 officially made me tear up. So we are not even halfway through the book. I'm 40% of the way through and I teared up. One of my friends told me today that the reason she hasn't read this book yet is because she saw so many people crying about it online and she doesn't really like to read books that make you cry. So knowing myself, I literally will cry with anything. I'm anticipating tears at the end of this book because just this little part of the book just got me so like, I don't know, emotional. It was just so cute and so sweet and so like real that got me not full on crying but the eyes did fill up a little bit so we're going to continue reading um i think i can definitely get to the halfway mark tonight and then tomorrow uh, i'll update you on my thoughts but so far from the smile on my face and from the fact that i teared up you can probably guess it's going to be positive Hi, it's time for a mid-book update for Happy Place by Emily Henry. I was waiting until I was like more put together before making this update, but I don't want to stop reading and I don't feel like getting ready for the day, so this is what you're going to get for now. I have read 227 pages, which according to my Kindle is 59% of the book, and so far there I say, I think this is the perfect romance book for me. This is the first time in my life where I've read a love story like a, in a romance book. And I don't, this is not a spoiler because I don't know how the story is going to end, but I could see this book ending and them not being able to be together and them still having so much love for each other but just being in different places in life. Like, I I don't know if they're not going to end up together. I want them so badly to figure out a way to get back to each other. But I, I wouldn't feel like it's off character if they just weren't able to, not because they don't love each other, but because they love each other so much and want the other to be happy and want the other to pursue their dreams and their like ideal lives. So I am enjoying this book so much. I'm so interested in their relationship. I do like the POVs where like they're in the now more than the POVs where we go back to when they were dating just because I'm more interested in that tension and that like wanting the person so badly but also knowing that if you do get together you're going to be crossing a line and it's going to complicate things so much more for the future you but it's still very interesting to see the promises that, you know, they made each other and the promises that we all make when we are in love and we think things are going to last forever, but then life just sort of happens. I'm really enjoying it. I still like the relationships that they have with their friends a lot. I feel like those interactions add a lot to each character because it's not just about them. And that's what I think is my favorite thing about this book is because it's not just about Harriet and Wynne. It's also about Sabrina. It's also about Cleo also about path or path it's about their friends as well and their family so really really happy with how this book is going i feel like it's emotional but it's also funny and tender and silly at times i like the way that they talk to each other even though they have hurt each other so much i still feel like deep down all they do is care for the other and even if they wanted to, even if they feel hurt and they feel betrayed and they feel upset by what that person has done, I don't think they could possibly hurt each other intentionally. So I'm going to keep reading it. I will probably update you once I'm done with this book. I'm going to try to finish it either today or tomorrow morning. Uh, but so far, this is on the track to be possibly a five-star read for me. And this will be the first time in my life where I give a romance book five stars. So, and by the way, do you guys think I say romance weird? Because every time I film a TikTok where I say that word, 
the like caption system can't understand what I'm saying. They think I'm saying Roman C. I don't know. I don't know how else to say it, but I don't know if I say it weird. So I don't know. That's beyond the point. Let's get back to reading and I'll give you an update when I have anything else to say or when I'm done with this book. book there's a scene where they mention a horseshoe crab I'm sure it's very unimportant to the plot but in case you were wondering this is what one looks like so there's that in case you were wondering this is my happy place I'm still here it's a couple of hours later I have about 30 to 40 pages left of this book I think I have like 38 pages left and what I wanted to say is just the thought that I have while reading this book. I really, really like the metaphor that Emily Henry created when it comes to like making pottery and building clay and like their relationship. I just really like that idea of like, it's something that like doesn't necessarily have to be destroyed just because you're changing the shape. It's not like breakable, it's bendable and it's something that you're constantly going to have to be tweaking and finding new shapes and finding new ways to recreate that love. I really, really like that idea. Again, this is not a spoiler. I'm not done with the book. I just like the idea of pottery and love, not necessarily only romantic love, but also it applies to like the love that these friends have for each other and, uh, innate, and how inevitable it is that any love that you have for any person in this world is going to change over time but that doesn't mean that it's broken it just means that you're bending it in order to fit the place you are in life at this moment because as much as we would all love to keep things the way that they've always been especially things that are precious and special, that's not life because we're always going to be changing and we're always going to be moving into new moments of our life. So it's impossible to keep love the same way it's always been and therefore we need to bend it and find new shapes that can fit who we are and also what this love is becoming, if that makes sense. Anyway, just a little thought that I had while reading this. I think I'm probably going to try to finish it right now and then get myself together for the day and give you my full thoughts but continue to loving this book i feel like the only way this book would not be a five stars is if like emily henry really messed up towards the end which i don't think she's gonna do so great great start to this vlog so far hi it has been a couple of hours since i finished reading happy place by emily henry and from the smile on my face, you can probably tell that this book absolutely was a five-star read, which is such a good way to start this vlog. There were many things that I enjoyed about this book, but especially the thing that I liked the most was the way that Emily Henry explored the relationships within this story. I feel like something that she did very well was to make the romance and the love story the main focus of the story, but not the only thing that mattered because I feel like I felt equally invested or maybe like 70 and 30 percent invested in her relationship with Wynn but also her relationship with her friends her relationship with her family her relationship with Wynn's family her relationship with her sister and all of the little things that made these characters themselves and all of the little ways in which they interacted with one another made a lot of sense I felt like she put a lot of work on each individual character so that it didn't feel like the only thing that mattered was Wynn and Harriet which was something that I absolutely enjoyed because you could see that her struggles and everything that she was going through was not only affecting Harriet herself and her relationship with Wynn, but her relationship with every single person in her life. And that was something that I really enjoyed. It made us feel like her life was not only her relationship, but it also pointed out that when we are struggling and when we don't know how to ask for help, it'll affect every single aspect and every single relationship in our lives. And as hard as it is to reach out, if we don't, we might end up losing or 
we might drift away from the people we love the most in this world. So that was something that I really enjoyed, the way in which relationships were explored, every single type of love and um, the way that everything was tied together within all of those relationships, not just her and when. I made some notes as well of things that I wanted to make sure that I talked about on my full thoughts. Something that I wrote down was that the romance felt real, which I absolutely think it did. I felt like those two characters could very well be people that exist in the real world. I felt like the way in which they interacted with their own emotions and the way that they dealt with their own traumas made a lot of sense, which was something that I really enjoyed. I felt like the friendships felt real. And I feel like this book also touches on very important things that we go through in life, which is just as you grow older, we never want things to change. I feel like one of your fears as you get older is that things are changing at such a fast pace and there's nothing you can do about it. And you start looking back at the relationships that you have when you were a teenager, when you were a young adult with so much nostalgia and you almost don't want to lose those interactions but changes are inevitable and it's what we do with the changes that really matters again i think we go back to the metaphor that i was talking about when it comes to pottery and i felt like i really enjoyed that and i feel like those are things that everyone can relate to because i feel like every single person that has ever had a relationship that they cared about and that doesn't need to be only romantic has found themselves in situations where you begin to realize that things are changing but that those changes don't necessarily need to be bad because you can change together with the people that you love that was something that i also really really enjoyed let me see what else i said I really loved that there was never any moment in this book where it felt like the characters absolutely despised each other. I felt like every single thing that they went through was surrounded by love and was because of how much they loved each other. I enjoyed that there wasn't like, I don't know, it was, there was never a moment where you felt like what the characters were doing were with the intention of hurting the other person. It was all done out of love and I really enjoyed that as well. Let's see what else I said. I also spent some time researching other reviews on this book because I remember that when it came out it was so controversial. Some of the die-hard Emily Henry fans were like in the trenches because they disliked this book so much and they were fighting for their lives to prove the point that this was not a romance book after all. And a common thread that I saw in a lot of negative reviews of this book was that they said that this book had the miscommunication trope, which to an extent I understand, but I also feel like the miscommunication in this book felt extremely justified and felt real. I have seen a lot of people say that they despised miscommunication in romance books and I have not read enough to know like when it's done very very poorly but I can understand when it's like something silly that could have easily been solved with a conversation that could be annoying but I really don't think that's the case in this book I feel like the miscommunication that these characters had existed because of so many other reasons. It wasn't just something silly that one said and the other didn't understand properly and they never talked about it. There was so much pain. There was so much pain and individual grief that these two characters were going through and that is why they couldn't communicate proper. I just ran out of space in my memory card. I'm sorry if the angle is slightly off. I just ran out of space on my memory card, so I had to fix that before I continued talking. But what I believe I was saying was that I don't feel like the miscommunication in this book was simple. And I feel like it was extremely believable. What I feel like often happens when people criticize miscommunication is because we are reading after the fact. So of course, in hindsight, you can see so clearly how this could be solved with a simple conversation. But in the moment, that's not how it works. I'm sure every single person can think back of a time in their lives where they had an argument or they dealt with a situation in a way that wasn't really ideal. And of course, in hindsight, you can see that. But within the moment when you're hurting, especially when you add grief to 
the batter of feelings that you're feeling, it complicates things so much. So I feel like it was extremely believable and justifiable that these characters didn't have the language to talk and to communicate with each other. And I feel like it was necessary for them to step away from one another in order to be able to come back and have those conversations and find out why they got to the point that they got, why they are here and why they're no longer together. So I don't think that just saying that this book is not good because of miscommunication is really fair because I feel like when you put in every single thing that these characters was, were going through into that conversation, it clears up why they couldn't communicate. At least that's my opinion. And lastly, I honestly feel like it's safe to say that this is my favorite romance book of all time. I have not read a lot of them, but I absolutely love this. There was never a single moment in the story where I felt bored or uninterested or where I felt like I knew where things were going. So I really, really, really enjoy this. I feel like these are characters that I will cherish forever. Their stories, their love, their love for each other, their growth. And I honestly also feel like there were some lessons that I am going to take to my personal life within this story. Also, I feel like this story hits very close to home for me because my partner and I did long distance for three years of our relationship. And we have had to have those type of conversations where we realize that we're going to have to make a lot of sacrifices to be together. We're going to have to move countries. We're going to have to make all of those big changes in our lives in order to prioritize our relationship. And you have to often find the balance of when prioritizing the relationship means sacrificing parts of yourself and how can you make sure that that is not happening. So I feel like that really hit close to home for me, which is why this book absolutely is a five-star read for me. I fall under the, under the category of the girlies that absolutely love this. I feel like I'm not going to like an Emily Henry book as much as I like this one, but I'm definitely going to read more of her work. And I'm definitely going to read her new book that's coming out, either this or next year. So great great fantastic way to start this vlog and now we are going to start reading check and mate by ellie hazelwood hi i am about to make myself some food and then after that i am going to clean my house you can see the mess that my kitchen is at the moment i promise it'll get better so i thought i would come here and tell you what check and mate by ellie hazelwood is about and since I'm going to have quite a few hours of like making food, having lunch, cleaning the house, I can probably give you an update after that. So, Check and Mate by Ellie Hazelwood is this YA romance about this young girl who I can't remember the name of, but what I know is that she used to play chess when she was younger. It was like her thing with her father. And she was extremely good at chess. She was like on track to become like a chess prodigy. She was probably going to become one of the best in the world, if not the best. However, something happened that is unclear to us between her and her father. Her father is no longer a part of her life and she hasn't played chess since that happened. She refuses to play it. It's too painful for her. So she kind of stopped that journey in her life. Years later, she is 18 years old and her best friend begs her to please play chess for like this charity that like has something to do with her college application. I don't know, something important for her best friend. She asks her to play on a match and she does, but she is matched up against with the best chess player in the world who turns out to be this really hot young dude and she beats him. After that, literally everyone is talking about her and she kind of finds herself slowly inching back into the chess world and the story is going to unfold from there so let's get cooking and listening to this audiobook i am so excited i feel like i'm about to like watch a really cute movie especially because i'm listening to it on audio i feel like it's going to be a very fun experience so let's do just that 
Hi, it's time for my first update of Check and Mate because, believe it or not, I have already listened to 53% of this book. I am flying through the story and the main reason is that I honestly don't want to stop listening to it because I'm happy to report that I am absolutely loving this book. I feel like this book is making me feel silly, it's making me feel giddy, it's making me giggle, it's making me swoon. I am just really enjoying my experience reading this book. I feel like the plot is really well constructed in the sense that we do have the relationship that is of course the driving force of the story and what we really really care about as readers but there are still enough things placed within each character's lives that make them very interesting and that gives them space to grow as individual characters. There are things that Mallory needs to work on, there are things that Nolan needs to work on, and there are things that they can work on together. So I really enjoy that aspect as well because I feel like what tends to happen in a lot of romance books that I don't enjoy is that it's only focused on the relationship. And even though the relationship is so cute and I am really invested in both of them getting together. I also want to see them work through those things, those issues that they have. So I am loving this book so far. I was not expecting to enjoy this book as much as I am enjoying it. I thought I was going to like it, but I almost felt like I would have like a more distant relationship between me and the characters. But honestly, I am sold on them. This book is making me smile so much. I have giggled so many times. I really enjoy Ellie Hazelwood's voice in the story. I was a little bit worried that I would fall under the group of people that find her writing a little bit cringe, but I feel like it's like the cringe that I like. I understand why people say that about her writing style, but it honestly does not bother me because it just makes me smile. I feel like when a lot of people criticize her is about it's because she has so many references to like pop culture in her story. And at first, when I first started listening to it, I was like, it wasn't that it was bothering me, but I was worried that the story would not live long because like I was like well in 10 years if someone reads this they're not going to understand these references but then another part of me was like I'm sorry my dog decided this would be the perfect time for her to finish her breakfast it's like 4 p.m almost and she just decided that now was the time so I'm sorry about that noise but I feel like it doesn't matter if people understand it within 10 years or not because I understand it right now and I'm having a good time right now so really really happy with the story so far really impressed really surprised and here for the ride I love both of these characters I wish them the absolute best this is so freaking cute I feel like a teenage girl again and so happy. Happy to be here. Happy to be reading this book. Happy to have part of this video because I don't think I would have read it if it wasn't for this video. So congratulations, Ellie Hazelwood. You have a new reader. Hi, if you are observant enough, I am wearing exactly the same outfit that I was wearing on my wrap up for Happy Place. That's because I finished reading those two books around the same time. So I'm filming my review on Check and Mate right after filming my review on Happy Place. My thoughts on Check and Mate, I feel like this book was extremely, extremely cute. I don't think it is as deep as Happy Place. I don't think it made me feel as many emotions as Happy Place made me feel, but I also don't think that's what the book is set out to do. I don't think this is meant to be a super deep and super um, life-changing romance, but it's really, really cute and it keeps you so entertained and it keeps a smile on your face and I feel like for that reason alone, it's worth a read. I gave this book a four stars and I feel like something that's really interesting to see it's how even star ratings are subjective because I gave Happy Place a five stars and I gave this one a four stars which when you look at it it's not that different but I gave them those ratings for very different reasons. I gave Check and Mate four stars just because it kept me giggly, it kept me happy, I thought it was 
just a very lovely and fun read. I feel like the characters were endearing, the characters were engaging, the family, again, the family dynamics in the story were very, very interesting. I felt like even though this is a YA, I would even argue that this is a new adult book because it felt a little too spicy for YA, even though it wasn't spicy at all. But I feel like um, even though it was a book targeted to younger audiences, it did a very good job at still tackling tough conversations and tackling trauma and emotions and um, just family dynamics that might be a little bit complex, which made me really, really enjoy the book. Uh, as a whole, I feel like this was a very, very fun time. I would say that from now on, I might even look back into Ellie Hazelwood as like a feel-good author, like whenever I just want to listen to something that is going to make me happy, that is going to put a smile on my face and keep myself just entertained throughout the whole story. I would probably think of checking out more of Ellie Hazelwood's books because that's what this one did for me. I don't feel like I have very deep thoughts in the story, but I don't think that's really necessary. A story doesn't need to be deep and life-changing in order to be enjoyable, and I feel like this book was extremely enjoyable, extremely readable, and just something that you can really just listen without having to pour a lot of like emotional um, labor into, but still come out of it feeling just happy. And that's what this book made me. This book made me feel like a teenager again. It made me giggle, it made me swoon, and it just put a smile on my face. And for that reason, it got four stars. Well, four stars. Now, uh, I am about to start listening to the audiobook of the... The Seven Year Slip by Ashley Poston. Uh, I don't know too much about this book, so I am not going to give that long of a synopsis right now just because I wouldn't really know what to say. Um, I just know that this book was extremely, extremely popular, so I want to give it a try for this vlog. I have so much work to do around my house. If I turn this camera around, you'd probably freak out just as much as I'm starting to freak out right now. My sister gets here from Brazil tomorrow and I just need to get this house ready to welcome her. So that's what we are about to do. I'm about to just clean my house, organize my house and listen to this audiobook. So I'll do that for now and whenever I have a little bit more to say or a clearer idea of what this book is about because right now I have a very general knowledge, I'll come and update you. But that's everything I have to say for now and I'll see you in a little bit. Hi, it is clearly the next day. I am about to head out to pick up my sister from the airport. Well, I'm gonna catch an Uber to go pick her up because I don't have my own car and my fiance is at work, which is completely unimportant to what I came to say. I have listened to over half, I believe, or I'm about halfway through um, The Seven Year Slip by Ashton. The Seven Year Slip by Ashley Poston. I'm on chapter 20. And I don't think I like this book. I just think it's kind of cringy. I think that a lot of the things within the plot and a lot of the things about the characters just don't make sense. Like, I feel like I keep finding inconsistencies and they happen within like pages from each other. So it just feels like this book needed it a lot more editing and needed like a I that was more careful to those inconsistencies because they're really taking me away from the story. I also feel like, and this is kind of like confusing to me because I mentioned how a lot of people criticize Ellie Hazelwood for being too millennial in her books and for making way too many references to pop culture, which she does, but it didn't bother me in Check and Mate at all. Like I enjoyed those references because I felt like they grounded me. However, in this book, the references just feel 
very, very cringy. And I feel like the reason for that is because Ellie Hazelwood is able to really make those references part of the character's lives and part of the plot in a sense that it makes sense for those characters to be referencing those things, to be thinking about like pop culture things that we think about. Whereas in this book, it feels like the author tried to insert those references in order to be like... I can't think of the word, in order to be like um, relatable. Like it felt like she was trying to be so relatable with those references that it just feels cringy when they happen. And circling back to what I talked about, like when it comes to inconsistencies, an example of that is the love interest in the story is a chef. So obviously he knows a lot about food. He can cook very, very well. And the main character thinks how like, she doesn't really understand anything about food. She doesn't really cook anything. She knows the very basics, but she can't like make like a wonderful meal for herself. She says that she's been like ordering the same takeout for months on end. And yet when she tries his food, she's able to come up with all of these like rich descriptions to the flavors that she's like tasting, which I feel like if you are not someone who really really knows food i don't think you'd be able to describe food the way in which she did because she almost described it like flavor by flavor almost like a food critic would describe i also don't feel convinced by the love that they have for each other it felt like it was very sudden i felt like it was just like they met, she was kind of weirded out, and then she was in love. There wasn't any in between. It also did not feel like they knew each other enough to be that in love, to be that like important in each other's stories. Obviously, I don't know how things are going to wrap up, but something else that bothered me is that like at some point, did I talk about what this book is even about? I don't think I did. So this book is about this girl. Oh my God, how did I forget? This book is about this girl named Clementine who has recently moved into an apartment that her aunt used to live in. She was very, very close to her aunt and her aunt has recently passed away. However, when she was younger, her aunt told her that this apartment is magical. So pretty much what happens in this apartment is that every now and again, there's a gap in the like time continuum and you are inside of that apartment you are able to go seven years in the past and you are able to interact with whoever was living in that apartment at that time if that makes sense she's inside of this apartment and all of a sudden this man is in there but in reality he was living there seven years in the past because he was subletting this apartment while her aunt and her were out on a trip but when she was younger, her aunt also told her there were two main rules to her apartment. Rule number one was always take your shoes off before you go inside. And rule number two was never fall in love inside the apartment. So with that being said, because there is a seven year gap from when she meets him and the real world, when she encounters this man again, she's like keeps thinking about how many things could have changed like obviously it's been such a long time that you had no contact with this person you are going to change in the space of seven years and then she's upset that he has changed like you literally just said i don't know i don't know who i'm going to encounter because obviously he has changed i don't know like even though i feel like if i was in her situation I would feel upset too because for her it has not been seven years and for him it has been seven years so I understand that this is a bit of like an unfair judgment on my part but also it just annoys me I just don't think I like this main character I don't think I care for the love interest I I find the writing a bit cringy I feel like she's saying that she's feeling all of these emotions for this guy without actually showing me those emotions. It just feels like everything is happening like this. And I'm not convinced that they care for each other. I can't understand why they care for each other. And I just feel like 
it's a bit predictable as well. I just feel like I know where this plot is going to go and I will check back in and tell you whether I was right or wrong. I'm not going to tell you how it ends, but I feel like it's just a bit eh for me. I, I see the appeal, but it just doesn't appeal to me at all. So this one not the book for me. I am really sorry if you loved this book and if you for some reason were excited that I was reading it. It's just too much. F it, the focus is too much on the two main characters, which I completely understand this is a romance book and sh the author is allowed to do that. But I feel like for me, in order for me to be invested in these characters and in their love story, I need a lot more. And I don't feel like I'm getting this from this book. So I needed the other characters, the side characters to be more important. I needed them to have their own troubles and things that they're growing through. I don't feel like this main character is really growing through anything aside from the fact that she wants to see this man again. I feel like she often talks about how like, oh, like he's so put together and I'm not, when like you're about to get promoted and you're really fucking young and that's about to happen to you. What do you mean you don't have your life together? I don't know. It's just annoying me. I am so sorry. This book, I don't think it's for me. I am going to finish it. Maybe within the last, how long have I got? Three hours of the book. It, it could change my mind. I could be very satisfied with how it ends. It can get really fucking cute. And maybe they will actually show me why they care for each other and why they love each other so much. So things could change. But as of right now, this one, not for me. But we will see. I do really, really need to go. I think my sister will get here very, very soon. Yeah, she'll literally be here in 20 minutes, so I have to get going, but I'll see you later whenever I have anything else to say. Hi, please ignore the state of my hair right now. I just went on a walk with my dog and it's raining a lot today, so that's why I look like a wet rat. Uh, she kind of looks like a wet rat too, so we're together in that at least. I just came here to give you an update because last night I finished listening to the audiobook of The Seven Year Slip by Ashton Poston. I think that's her name. And my, yes, Boston, my opinion in this book has not changed. I did not like it. I gave this book a two stars. And quite honestly, I found this to be a very annoying read. I feel like if I wasn't filming this video, I would not have finished this book. I would have DNF'd it. I felt like throughout the story, I was annoyed by the main character. I was annoyed by her voice. I was annoyed at her friends. I was annoyed at the main love interest. I just found every single person in this book to be really, really annoying. And I just felt like there wasn't a single moment in the story that I felt invested in their love story. I don't think there was a single moment where I believed that they cared for each other or not that I didn't think they cared for each other, but I didn't understand why. I didn't understand why they fell in love. I don't think it felt to me like there was any progression in their love. It was like going from not knowing each other to being really intimate very, very fast and to assuming they know everything there is to know about each other and that they understand each other deeper than anyone else they've ever met when the time in which they spend together that is not shown to us i feel like if i compare this to both happy place and check and mate it's in a completely different ranking of like how well developed both of those books are i feel like in happy place the love that those two characters have for each other is so tangible. You can feel it through reading the story. You understand the love, the care, how much the other is important. Whereas in Check and Mate, you, it, it's like a fresh beginning of love sort of feeling. You don't really know whether or not they're going to be together for the rest of their lives, but I don't think it matters because you understand that that's a beginning and that's something that both of them want at that moment. And that's truly what is important for them. It's just that excitement, that freshness, and like the giddiness that you get when you meet someone that you really like for the first time. And in this book, 
it wants to be both of those things and it's just not i don't understand why they want to be together i don't understand why they like each other i don't feel any love for either of them and also i feel like i finally understand why people hate the miscommunication trope so much because i feel like this book would not exist if they had had a simple conversation at the beginning of their relationship this is the type of miscommunication that annoys me because it was so avoidable i feel like like i talked about in happy place the reason why they had the issues that they had was on the surface level because of miscommunication but if you dig deeper you can understand why they couldn't communicate with each other you can understand why they needed that time apart whereas with these two characters there truly is not a single reason why they couldn't have had an honest conversation from the get-go especially because there are no stakes they don't know each other and like when they get to the point where they have that conversation it's just not a problem so why was it a problem to begin with does that make sense? It's just so stupid. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to say this, but I just felt like this book was stupid because everything that you build up to could have been solved and it is solved in like three pages and that's it. I just don't think this is the book for me. It just felt like very, very surface level. I feel like it, there's also so many inconsistencies in this book, so many plot holes, so many things that like we are told a character cannot do and then three pages later they are doing it and that's my opinion it is poorly written it was poorly edited and i just honestly don't care for the two main characters i don't care for this book it's probably going to leave my brain like in three weeks and i'm never gonna think about it again and i don't want to think about it again because i didn't like it so those are my honest yes harsh but honest opinions on the seven year slip not for me i'm sorry if this was for you no it's a no for me so that is the only one so far that i have not enjoyed which still means for me that this video has been a success because i've read three books and i really loved two and i only disliked one so it's looking really good for the romance girlies right now now i am going to start the last book of this video which is seven days in june by tia williams I actually got a physical copy of this book for free from my used bookstore, which you will see in next week's vlog. So yeah, I finally have a physical copy. I have a book to hold, uh, even though I'm still going to be reading this from my Kindle because I have it on my Kindle. I borrowed it from my library and I just prefer to read it there, but I can still have something to hold while I talk about this book on my updates. So I'm going to get started on this and I'll probably come back and update on my thoughts and what this book is generally about when I'm about a hundred pages in. So I'll see you in a little bit. It has been quite a few days since the last time I spoke to you. The last time we talked, I said that I was going to give you an update whenever I reached the half mark on Seven Days in June by Tia Williams. Well, it is a few days later and I actually finished reading this book today. I have been extremely busy. My sister is here visiting me from Brazil. So I've sort of been trying to like squeeze in as much reading as possible whenever we're not like out and about and doing stuff which is why I felt like I didn't really have the time to come here and update you when I reached the halfway mark. So I'm going to give you like my general thoughts and also a brief synopsis on this book. So this is a story about two different characters called Eva and Shane, who when they were like 17 years old, had a very intense one week together where they fell in love, but also shared a lot of traumatic and troubled experiences together within that one week something happened where their paths went completely different directions and they haven't really seen each other in years they're both writers and have managed to somehow not cross paths their whole adult lives until one day 
they stumble upon each other at a literary event and it sort of like brings everything back to the surface. They have to come to terms with what happened when they were teenagers and what caused them to go their separate ways and also with feelings that they have for each other that they haven't really addressed since they were teens. This was a very intense book. I would definitely say this is a way more serious and more of like a literary romance other than anything else. This is beautifully written. It also has like a fun voice at the same time. It's very humorous but it's tackling very very deep and very very serious topics. I feel like it took me a little bit to get into this book. I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about it at first because it takes quite a while for you to like meet the love interest. For a long time you're just with Eva so I wasn't entirely sure where this story was going. I had like a general idea of what this book was about but I really didn't know how serious and um it was going to be so i wasn't sure at first if i was going to like it because it took us so long to have these two characters in the same place i feel like it took about 50 pages whereas in the other books i feel like within the two pages you see the two main love interests together but because this is way more character driven and character focused you spend a lot more time with these characters individually and then with them together um, I really enjoyed my reading experience with this book. Towards the end of the book, I was completely sold in the story. I deeply cared about these characters and I really wanted them to be okay. I wanted them to be together, but more than anything, I just wanted them to be okay. I wanted them to heal everything that they went through when they were younger. And I feel like it was really well done. The themes that are explored in the story were explored so, so well. And I overall really, really enjoyed this book. I would definitely say that even though this is like sweet and cute it is a lot more serious so if you're looking for something that is light and quicker like read where you can kind of like detach yourself from the characters a little bit easier this is not the one to go but if you want a beautifully written love story that is deep that touches in real life issues and also has very interesting commentary within the literary world and also about trauma and addiction and growing to the person that you were always meant to be despite every everything being against you. I really, really enjoyed my experience reading this book. I'm definitely going to pick up more books by this author. I know Tia Williams just released a new book, which I'm excited to read eventually. I definitely feel interested. I'm happy I picked this book for this video, even though it is a little bit different in tone because it's so much more serious, but I feel like it mixed literary fiction with romance and love in a very, very wonderful way. I also really enjoyed um, the main character's daughter in this story and I enjoyed the relationship that Shane has with her daughter and also the relationship that Shane has with like his students and children in general just because I also work with kids so I feel like whenever I see those dynamics in stories I always feel very interested to see how they are going to be explored so I gave this four and a half stars uh, was not a five stars quite yet but also i could not give this book less than four stars because it's so well written and so beautiful and so moving so that is the last book that we are going to read for this video so with that being said i believe we have come to the end of this experience i feel like this was extremely successful i read four books Happy Place by Emily Henry, Check and Mate by Ellie Hazelwood, The Seven Year Slip by Ashley Posnan, and Seven Days in June by Tia Williams. And there was only one book that I did not enjoy, which was The Seven Year Slip by Ashley Posnan. I gave you my thoughts on why I didn't enjoy that book, why I didn't feel like it was for me. But aside from that, I feel like every other book that I read, I really, really enjoyed. My favorite will definitely have to be Happy Place by Emily Henry. And yes, I did purchase myself a copy of this book. Not only do I love this cover, I feel like this is my favorite Emily Henry cover that she has out. I just loved this book so much and I just really wanted to have a copy. I think I remember it being a thing when this book came out that like the insides were different colors. In case that is a thing, mine is pink. 
I just had to have a copy of this book. I loved it. And I will be glad to display this on my shelves. I would say that overall, this reading experiment really made me excited to try out different romance books. I feel like for the longest time, I have not explored the genre just because I was convinced that I did not like it. But this week has really shown me that it's not about the genre itself. It's about finding the right stories and the stories that are right for me. I can 100% say to you that I am going to read more Emily Henry books. And to prove that, since reading Happy Place, I have purchased a copy of Beach Read by Emily Henry and also Book Lovers by Emily Henry. I'm actually going on vacation tomorrow and I believe I'm going to be bringing this book with me. So maybe you will see a vlog where I read this book or maybe I'll do a vlog reading all of Emily Henry's books. I'm not entirely sure yet, but I will definitely be picking this one up very very soon i would say that emily henry happy place was definitely my favorite book of this video right after happy place even though i gave it four stars and i gave seven days in june four and a half i feel like i'm gonna say it's check and mate just because i had so much fun reading that book it just made me so happy and it made me feel silly and giddy so for that reason i feel like i need to put that book in second place and then seven years in june and in dead last like the gap between these two is so big is the seven year slip which i just did not enjoy but overall this was an absolute success. I will definitely be picking up more romance books in the future. I'm already excited to check out so many books that I've like been keeping tabs on. I might even try to read Ellie Hazelwood's newest release, which I believe is called, it's called Bride. So maybe I'll be reading that as well at some point. But overall, I'm very happy I did this. I'm very happy I challenged myself to step out of my comfort zone and read from a genre that I initially thought I did not like, but it turns out I actually really enjoy. And also discover a new author who may very well become a new favorite author because it's been a week and I've already bought three of her titles. So very, very excited about that. But if you have reached the end of this video, I just want to thank you so much for joining me on this journey. Please consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. I'll be posting a lot more videos like this throughout the year and I'm really excited to continue this journey with all of you. Please give me a like and leave me a comment letting me know if there are any other romance books that you think I should check out because I'd be more than happy to give them a try. Again, thank you so much for being here and I will see you on my next video. Bye-bye.